All right, so I bought a backhoe and it's a Case 580E. I'm not sure of the year yet because I haven't decoded the serial number, but uh, I got this about a week ago and I paid 8,500 for it. I got it about three and a half hours away from my house and I actually hauled it back on a 16 foot car trailer which uh, I should have never done, but to put it into perspective, it took five hours to get back. Um, I couldn't get any, anything over 55 because it would start fishtailing, and uh, I had to drive it with the, uh, with the bucket up in the air, overhanging the bed of the truck. But anyways, I'll probably make a video on that, on how it did fit on the trailer, because I know when I was looking into buying one of these, like I took all the measurements and um, it seemed like it would fit just fine, but maybe I did something wrong or I didn't factor the diameter of the tire correctly, but it definitely did not fit on the trailer. But, uh, but anyways, there's a few things that it needs, um, such as the, the backhoe swing tower pins. They really need to be redone before I do any serious work with it. There's um, only a couple leaks, but nothing too serious. One of them is up in here. I think it's just a loose line though, because it drips and then runs down the line. Or it could be a crack fitting, something like that, but it's not bad, like it won't ever puddle up or anything like that. It's just an occasional drip. Um, as far as all the cylinders though, I think none of them actually leak. Um, the shuttle leaks a little bit of fluid. The, uh, the engine leaks just a little bit. The, the rear axle or transaxle is perfectly fine. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's got good tires on it. The fronts both leak, one faster than the other, which is unfortunate, but at least it's not the rear tires because those are, those are a real pain to fix because they're so heavy. Needs a muffler seat's got a tear in it the roof has some rust holes in it um, the throttle linkages stick together um, so I have a bungee cord on it now because otherwise it'll just stick wherever you push it to but you can see the hand throttle moving at the same time and without this bungee cord like if you push it down it'll just stay and uh, you'd have to push it back to auto manually. Um, I think the hand throttle still works even with that bungee cord on there, but that's one thing. And the, uh, the clutch disconnect switch that goes on the boom here is missing, and the one that goes on the floor is missing as well. And all around, the connections to the shuttle, both electric and mechanical, like the linkages itself, they're really rigged. I think somebody got in there that didn't know what they were doing and put a bunch of stuff in that should have never been there in the first place. Um, and the cluster needs refinished as well. None of the gauges worked on it. Somebody put a aftermarket ignition switch and they tied into the factory harness right here, which is a big no-no. So I think they bypassed a couple of important wires and that's why none of the gauges work. Like that's supposed to plug directly into the factory switch. And it's just got some cheap aftermarket one. But yeah, I guess we'll we'll start it up, show how it runs and show the controls of it. Now this isn't the first time that I've run it, because like I said, I've had this about uh, a week now and I wanted to get some like perspective on it you know what it needs what it doesn't need what things need addressed first like that swing um, that swing tower pins I'll show those in a second those are very 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 worn um, and this machine the um, the hour meter only shows 5200 hours but it was not working when I picked it up so I don't know how many are actually on it the tachometer drive cable has been um, disconnected from the engine and I think it's been that way for a while so I really don't don't know the hours it might be somewhere around seven to eight thousand
on the shuttle leaving. Um, it's supposed to have a decent right there. It's supposed to be neutral, but that's actually reversed along with all of this. All of that is reversed. That's neutral. And it forwards all the way up. But sometimes if it's idling and it's shaking a lot, it won't stay. And it'll rattle back down into neutral. So all this linkage really needs to be fixed as well. But it does run pretty good. And as far as boom controls, you know, you go back and it lifts up. Left is to curl the bucket up. Right is to curl the bucket down. And then of course forward would be to put it down. And this does have an auto leveling feature. So when you raise the bucket, It'll keep it level as it goes up because otherwise it'll just tilt like this, so it actually raises it level. And same thing going down too, if you hold it to the left while going down, it'll automatically keep that position, which is pretty neat. But uh, it does have power steering as well, and it's literally a one finger deal, like it's really nice, especially for a heavy machine like this. So let's get to the back row and show you that. lever right here which releases the, uh, the transport mode. It's got a little collar that slides on that pin. So this one actually has a pretty rare option as far as what I've been able to see. Most of these have three sticks that control the back row itself and then it has the foot um, the foot pedal to control the swing. But all of that is incorporated into these two levers instead of the, the five lever setup that they all have. So to go out with the dipper stick, you push right on the right stick, and then control the bucket is also the right stick. So out, you go to the right, in, you go to the left, and to pull the dipper stick in, you go towards you. And then up and down on the boom is left stick, forward and back. And then to pivot the boom, you use the left stick as well to go left and right. Now to show you how warm these pins out are, um, I'm going to lower the boom to the ground and I'm going to push back and forth to show how loose it is. I'm going to show the pins. And it's not just the top and bottom, or it's not just the top one, it is both, it is top and bottom. Very warm, and also down here where the back row mounts to the frame, it's also quite loose. And apparently, you can tighten those nuts to eliminate all of that, but we'll see. I, that might be all it needs. I haven't looked into it yet. back in the transport mode, you have to basically boom up until it stops, which is right there, but you have to do it in a fluid motion. So you bring it up while it still has momentum, and then you push it back out, and it'll go over center into the transport mode.
So for anything, for anybody wondering how this transmission actually works, that's one, one thing that I was really looking for online before buying this, is some have a torque converter, some have like a manual clutch, um, some have a power shuttle, manual shuttle. But this particular model, I think the model, um, well it's optional on a lot of the older ones, but all of the model E or the case 580Es have this, the 580Ks, everything after this has this option. But basically it's a forward and reverse gearbox off, off of the engine, that's called the shuttle. And then outside of the shuttle goes the drive shaft to the rear axle, which is your four-speed manual transmission. So, um, to get it into gear, you know the torque converter is spinning, right? So you wouldn't be able to get it into gear because it would spin the output shaft. But, that's where you can put it to shuttle into neutral first, then put it, the transmission into gear, that would be first, and you, then you can choose forward or reverse with the shuttle. So this will be forward. Back to neutral, and then reverse. So it's really simple, and it's, it's really ingenious, like how it works, and it works really well. And it's got a differential lock on the bottom here. It's just a one press kind of engagement, and then it automatically disengages when you don't need it, or when torque is released off of it. Um, Yeah, as far as using the hydraulics while it's in gear or while it's, the shuttle is in forward or reverse, it can be really tricky because you need that power from the drivetrain to the hydraulics. Like if you're picking up a load with a bucket, you need that power. So there are some options available. That's what that switch would be for. It disengages the drive gear so you can rev the engine up to get more power. So. That's one option to do it. The other is a foot, a foot switch right here, but obviously that's missing. But all that does is it takes it from drive to neutral. That's all those switches are supposed to do to allow more power for the engine to run the hydraulics. But that's it. So if, uh, if you want to see some videos of me fixing this thing up and the millions of issues that it has and the video on if it'll fit on a 16 foot car trailer um, check my channel out because those will be coming soon